Hello, this is Mike Lively, and this is the second video on building a data-driven flipbook. Let me remind you uh, where we're at. Uh, we're working on creating this particular flipbook right here. The artwork's done by my son James, and I do the coding. So you flip that over, and you see you've got different images on both sides of the page. You only have three pages because in the next iteration, we're actually going to have the page flip around. And so you can actually have an infinite flipbook, just depending on the data that you use. All the data that we're using right now uh, is being brought in through an XML sheet. Let's go to... Uh, Flash Builder. So here's Flash Builder, and what you did last time is you uh, had the flip uh, book right here, and you created a data folder, and in that data folder you put your gallery of images. So let's click on that. In that gallery, basically you have everything you need, and specifically we're going to be working with the uh, thumbnail and the description. Now, you see we have a description that's fine, but the thumbnail has an image in it. Where do we put that image? Well, we got to create a images folder and we need to put our images in that. Now we already have an images folder and in the images folder are the old images of my family flipping around. Let's put the new images in and that's from James's artwork so let me go and grab that. So now you can see that we've pasted all of James's images into the image folder and we're going to leave the flipbook images in there for a little while. Unless I do that I'll get an error if I pull them out right now. So what we're going to do now is that we're actually going to add a data grid to the uh, flipbook component and then uh, create the data services. So the first thing you want to do is go to the flipbook component. So from the main program, you can see here's your components one. So just hold the control key down and, and click on that and it takes you right to the component. And let's go to design view. So I'm in design view and here's my flipbook. Let's go to windows and components. I'll bring this up so you can see that. So what I'm doing is repeating just a little bit of what we did in the last video because it didn't quite finish the data part. So let's just start from where we left off. Let's grab the data grid and just drag it onto the stage. That's all you have to do. And I'm going to use this to do the connection. And once the connection is done, I'm going to rewire everything. So here's my data grid, and I want to uh, create my services now. So just go up to Window, go to Data Services, and click on Connect Data Services. And choose HTTP. And I'm going to give the operation a name. We'll call it Get My Data. And I'll go to the URL where the data is, assets, uh, slash data, slash my gallery, dot XML. Did that last time. Do it again here. And in the service name, we just want to put get my data is or something like that. Okay. And we're done. So at that point, all you have to do is uh, hit finish, and it will create the services for you. So hit finish. Now the services are created, and what I want to do is pretty much just drag and drop these services right onto my data grid. So just uh, grab get my data is, and just drag it right onto the data grid, and see you got your little plus sign showing that it's going to connect. So let go of it, and it binds all that data automatically to the data grid. Now, now it wants to configure the return type. What does that mean? That means I want to tell it what part of the data to grab, and this is really beautiful that you can do that. So hit configure uh, data type, and all you have to do at this point is just hit next or that's right, hit next. And it shows you all the data. Isn't that wonderful? And at that point, I'm going to hit next. And so what's showing is my gallery, but I actually want to start my data at my item tag. So click on that and hit finish. And it will start right on that tag. So let's hit OK. And now everything is connected. Let's go ahead and run the program and see what we get. So when you run a program, here's my flipbook, and over here is all my data. We've got to pull it over, open it up a little bit so we can see everything, but it's just working perfectly at this point. I'm going to actually bring this to 50% uh, so I can see everything, and uh, there's my data grid. And I can move that over and play around with it, you know, or expand the screen, whatever needs to be done to see it all. But what's important here is not so much all of that. What's important is the fact that it's all now uh, coded and connected. And so what I want to do now is I want to recode all that so I can actually actively bring that data into my system. Let me show you how to do that. I'm clicked on the data grid itself. I want to go to the source code, and the source code is highlighted the data grid. And so you can see right here everything that is coming in, all the data right here. So that's all the data, the number, the title, the artist, the genres, the rating, the description, the thumb, the screenshot, the video. So all the data you need to make this thing work, and I want to make this dynamic. Now, when I create these services, two very important things were created. Let me show those to you right here. And that was this call responder, and the get my data is. Now, as the call responder, I want to change a little bit. I want to 
I actually want to create an array collection and stick everything in that array collection. And once everything's in the array collection, I can move it around anywhere within the program. So let's build an array collection. So what I've done is I've gone to the top of my code and I've imported the array collection class. And then I just created an array collection, which is bindable called myCollect. So now let's follow the logic of the program and show you the huge trick that you're going to use to turn all this data that's coming in into a rate collection that you can access throughout the program. So here's the trick. Let's follow the, the program flow. So let's go back to design. We're going to click on the uh, data grid. Let's go back to source so we can see where that is. And there's my data grid. Now within my data grid, there is a, a line of code called create complete. And basically when the data grid is create it, then it runs this method. What does the method do? The method calls the token. Okay? This grabs the data. So all of this is executed through the uh, call responder. So let's go back to the call responder. Here it is right here. And here's the trick. Right here. Watch very closely what we're about to do. We're going to open this up and add a line of code. So I'm going to just open that up, add the following line of code, and it says after that call responder is executed, the data is being grabbed. I want to uh, run a method, and here's my method right here: get my data result. And here it is right here. And what get my data result is going to do? It's going to take that array collection and stuff it with the last results. I mean, that's all that met all that data that you grabbed. So let's concentrate on this data grid method. Basically after your data grid is completed this method is executed and this calls a token that grabs the data. Now what we want to do is we don't want to use the data grid anymore. We want to get rid of it. But we want this uh, call token method to be executed. So basically on creation complete of the whole program we're going to call this. So let's come up here and create a method. So right within my uh, group tag and I'm just going to open this up a little bit. Let's just kind of space some of these in. There we go. So you can see all that right within that tag I'm just going to put a complete statement. So I'm going to go space and on. Let's put a creation complete right here. And I am actually want that to be gener auto generated for me. So I'll let that code be auto generated. I click, I click here, creation complete, hit that. There's my uh, auto generation. So that was generated. Let's hit the control key and go down there. And what I want to do is come up here and paste that create token that was created when the data grid was uh, finished creating. Let's copy that. Let's copy that line of code or uh, just basically hit, hit the alt key and tab it down into our method. And now what's going to happen is when my program is created, it's going to actually run the token method. Now let's hold the control key and go down there. And here it is right here in my call responder. And what I've done, I've added that method, get my data results. So the token's called, the data's brought in, get my data result occurs. And within get my data result, what I do is I take all the uh, data, I stuff it into the array collection that I created, and then, uh, for good measure, I'm actually going to say, what is the length of that array collection? Why do I need the length of that array collection? Because I'm going to use that to create the paging ability I need for my book. Now, at this point, we no longer need the data grid, so let's go back to design. Click on the data grid and just delete it. And that removes all that code. And we actually don't need the methods anymore that associate with the data grid, so we can delete that as well if we wanted to. And there's that method that was called... Uh, data grid complete which is blank right now. We'll just delete it for good measure. Let's run the program to make sure it's still running. See so if we don't get any errors. And there's an error. So click on that little error bar right there. It'll take us to the error. So we got wrong here. Let's see what it says. Type was not found. Uh, as a time consult. So what's happening here is I haven't put in the method for the uh, get result event. There's actually a, a class for that. So I'm going to try to bring that in just by doing the uh, code hinting. Let's uh, get result. Nope. Hit result. Try to complete that code wise. There it is. And let's click on that. And that should have automatically added that at that point. Let's check and see if it got added at the top. And there it is, automatically added. So that's pretty cool. When you use a code complete, it automatically adds the classes that you need. Now let's run the program and see if it works. And I still have the error, so let's go back to the error and debug it. And it doesn't like uh, the 
my length. Why doesn't it like that? Because I didn't add that in there as a name. So let's go ahead and go back up to the top and add that. I'll copy that. And uh, let's go ahead and add that as a name. So we'll just go private bar and we'll paste that name in. We'll, we'll make an integer and we'll just set it equal to zero. Okay, we should be good. Let's run the program now. And everything runs. All right, this was Mike Lively. Thanks for listening. We'll continue this in the next video.